Hi, my name's Greg from TP Photography and today I'm going to talk to you about the different Sony A7 cameras and which one might be the best for you. So there's three different cameras in the Sony lineup really. Uh, there's a 12 megapixel A7S variant, uh, there's a Sony A7 uh, 24 megapixel version, uh, the Mark 1 and the Mark 2, uh, and there's also the A7R Mark 2 which is the high resolution 42 megapixel camera. Now a lot of people got really excited when they heard about the A7R Mark II because it includes uh, 399 autofocus phase detection points, which is more than any other camera out there at the moment. Uh, and also it covers the whole of the frame pretty much uh, with phase detection points. Now the A7 II uh, has got phase detection points, uh, not quite as many, I think about 127 or so. Uh, but it doesn't cover quite as much of the frame. so. If you're like a, a Nikon shooter, then that's a bit like the, the D810 coverage versus the D750 uh, coverage of autofocus points. Uh, so you get a bit more coverage on the A7R Mark II, but uh, broadly speaking, uh, you're getting phase detect points versus the A7S series, uh, both the Mark I and the Mark II only allow contrast detect points. So the real advantage of that is if you're going to use third party lenses such as uh, Canon, uh, lenses, then you're going to be able to use uh, sort of some of the smart adapters which are going to enable autofocus. So there's a couple of options that you can do there. There's the uh, expensive Metabones uh, lens adapter which works quite well, uh, but you're looking quite expensive, maybe £400 for something like that. Uh, but the great thing is that they update the firmware, so the firmware gets updated on the Metabones uh, quite a lot. So when Sony recently update the firmware on the A7 Mark II camera to include phase detection support for third-party lenses and adapters, then Metabones added support for that, uh, which you know wasn't guaranteed with the other adapters. Now, I've also got a Comlight adapter and a Photodeox Pro adapter, uh, and I'll include the links for those in the description. Uh, both of those work with phase detect with third-party lenses uh, on with you know with Canon mount lenses, so I've I've tried that with the uh, amazing Sigma twenty millimeter one point four art lens. Uh, also, the Sigma twenty four to one hundred five art lens works really well on both of those adapters uh, with phase detection points. Uh, the only difference in those adapters really that I can see so far is that the uh, Comlight one uh, doesn't pass the lens information through to the camera, so everything else works. The phase detection works quite well. Uh, you can change the aperture. It's just when you look in the X, if it tells you it's a uh, zero millimeter lens, so you know you don't get the full uh, exif information. So if you're auto correcting the lens in Lightroom, then that won't come through. Uh, whereas the Photodeox Pro lens does give you that, and obviously the Metabones does as well. So you know you've got a few options there. So this is the Comlight adapter that I've got here, uh, and the Sigma 20 millimeter lens. So I can just put that on, uh, and then I stick this onto my uh, Sony camera, and I'll get full autofocus with the A7 Mark II and the A7R Mark II. Now if I put it on to uh, the A7 series camera, the A7S, uh, which is a, the 12 megapixel version, remember, uh, I'll still get autofocus, but it'll only give me contrast detection autofocus, which is, you know, it'll work, but you know, you wouldn't want to use it for anything where uh, you're in a hurry, basically. So, you know, I wouldn't want to use that at a wedding uh, or in the studio or anything like that, whereas I'm, I'm more than happy to to use this sort of setup uh, in the studio and in fact I have used it in the studio and out about uh, you know and there's no problem speed wise with the uh, smart adapters on the a7 II and the a7R II. So if it's important for you to use your Canon lenses on your Sony camera and you want fast autofocus speeds then you want to be looking at the Sony a7 Mark II or the Sony a7R Mark II uh, or the other a7 cameras are going to give you quite slow autofocus with the adapters. So that's obviously if you've got a set of Canon lenses then you're going to be wanting to look at uh, either a Metabones adapter uh, or a Photodex Pro or a Comlight adapter to give you that fast autofocus speed and you're going to want to choose the A7 Mark II or the A7R Mark II because that's going to give you the phase detect uh, autofocus and the, and the faster speed. Now having used the A7 Mark II and the A7R Mark II. The A7R Mark II is fractionally faster and gives you a bit bigger coverage across the frame, uh, but there's not too much in it in terms of speed. It's more about the, the coverage across the frame and, and a few other differences between the bodies. 
So I'm going to cover a little bit more about what the different bodies are there uh, and talk a bit more about adapters. So I'm going to cover the basic differences between uh, all of the A7 series cameras now. There's the, the A7S, uh, which is 12 megapixels in its Mark I and Mark II form. Uh, it's designed for low light, it's designed for video, it's got uh, a lot of video options. It'll shoot 4K video, the, the Mark II will shoot 4K video internally, uh, whereas the original would only shoot it uh, to an external recorder. Uh, but you do have a lot of different frame rates, slowdown options, things like that. Uh, I think to bear in mind with the A7S is it's probably the weakest of the three when it comes to using third party lenses so although the adapters will all work uh, if you're wanting to use your you know existing Canon lenses with decent autofocus performance then you know you have to rule the A7S out really because it's only got contrast detect autofocus uh, and it's not going to be very quick uh, you know so you don't want to be using it in that situation. Uh, now the A7 II, it's kind of the, it's sits in between those. Uh, it's got the medium resolution. It's got uh, 24 megapixels. It's got in-body image stabilization, so all your lenses become image stabilized. Uh, it's pretty good with adapters. Uh, you know the Metabones and and the other ones I've talked about earlier. Uh, it gives you fast performance with native lenses. Uh, it works well with the LA3 adapter and any. Sony lenses, especially now the firmware has been updated to use the uh, phase detect autofocus points that it had uh, in the same way as the A7R Mark II, which caused such a, a stir when that was announced and released. Uh, now, I'd say sensor wise, it's probably the weakest. Uh, it's not quite as good as a D750, uh, probably more like a 5D Mark III when it comes to the higher ISO performance. Uh, the dynamic range is, however, better than the Canon cameras. Uh, and you've obviously got the benefit of the, the tilt screen and things like that. Now, it's the only uh, camera in the lineup of the three that doesn't offer silent shutter. Uh, so if silent shutter is an important thing for you, then you don't want to be getting the A7 um, Mark II because it, it's not the quietest of them. Uh, but again, you know whether that's an issue to you or not is another thing I'll... So that's the, the sound of the ASM Mark II. It's, you know, it's not mega mega loud, but you know, it is. You know, if you look, if you're looking to move, choose one of the A7 cameras because of the silent shutter, then you know you don't want to be choosing the A7 Mark II. Uh, but the advantage is that it is the cheapest of the of the options. You know, it's you can probably pick it up for half the price of uh, what the A7S Mark II and the A7R Mark II is. So you know, you could get two of these for the price of one of the others. Now, if you don't care about the silent shutter, then you know, that's probably a, a, a reasonable way to go. Uh, so that leaves us with the the final one, the, the sort of the king, as it were, uh, the A7R Mark II. Now, I'd say this is probably the, the best overall one to get. Uh, you know, if you want, it's pretty good at video. It'll do 4K internally. Uh, it's got the tilt screen. It's got silent shutter. Uh, it, it'll only do silent shutter in single shots, however. Uh, the A7S and the A7S Mark II will do uh, silent shutter in bursts. So, you know, you have to keep pressing the shutter. So again, you know, bear that in mind if you're thinking, oh, I need a silent shutter and I want to be able to fire bursts in uh, in those sort of locations or situations that you're going to use it in. Uh, so you've got the resolution. I'd say probably the image quality is... Uh, you know, pretty close to the A7S and the A7S Mark II in low light situations because uh, you get the advantage of downsizing to the 12 megapixels uh, and in that situation the you know until you're probably at uh, 12,800 there's very little difference uh, whereas you probably would notice a bigger difference between uh, the A7R Mark II and the A7 Mark II so you know again bear in mind that you know you do pay more but you do get more features uh, so it depends whether the things that are important to you are uh, silent shutter, uh, image quality at higher ISO. Uh, you know, so so one thing I always say to people is, uh, look at your Lightroom catalog or whatever you're using. Really see what ISOs you shoot at. You know, if you're saying I want high ISO, high ISO performance, then you know that's all very well and good. But if you find that you you you're really taking ten shots uh, a wedding, for example, then you know, you might want to consider: Is it worth me paying twice as much uh, for those ten shots or something? When in reality, the the image quality of the A7 Mark II is still really good. It's just not as good 
uh, you know, it's still perfectly usable and perfectly acceptable for 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 many many uses. Uh, so, you know, I think my favourite overall is probably the A7R Mark II, simply because it's so versatile. It's got the resolution if you need it. Uh, it's got the uh, phase detect points all over the uh, the sensor, uh, so you know you've got faster autofocus than uh, either of the other two cameras, uh, but equally you do pay for that uh, privilege a little bit. So let's talk about adapters for the A7 series of cameras. Now I can get an adapter for uh, pretty much any lens. I can use it for uh, you know Sony A mount lenses, Canon EF mount lenses. Uh, any third-party lenses that use the EF mount, uh, any lenses that use the Nikon F mount, uh, any lenses that use the old FD mount. Uh, so I'm just going to show you a few different adapters here uh, and tell you about them uh, real quick. So here's just a, a what they call a dumb adapter. This is a, a Nikon F to Sony Nex mount. Uh, this just lets me control the aperture. Now this is an older style lens so I can control the aperture on the lens uh, but I can also control it by this little switch here on the on the adapter as well so unfortunately there's no autofocus adapter for Nikon yet now that is uh, possibly changing there's one listed on eBay uh, this month uh, again that's from Comlight so I'm hoping to get a sample of that and as soon as I get one of those I'll be able to let you know uh, you know what the performance is like with the Nikon lenses uh, and if it's as good as the Metabones adapter with Canon lenses uh, and also the uh, Sony LA3 adapter, which is really good with both the uh, Sony A7 Mark II and the Sony A7R Mark II. Uh, you pretty much get, if you choose a lens that's got the, the motor built into the Sony lens, then you get pretty good autofocus with that now. So you know, similar sort of thing to the Canon and Metabones combination. Now, I don't think that's a, a, a massive thing because most people don't have a a big stock of Sony lenses whereas they're probably more likely to have a, a set of uh, Canon lenses and also you know Canon lenses be more uh, prevalent and more cost effective then you know it wouldn't be the mess, most sensible thing to do to buy a LA3 adapter and then buy you know a whole set of Sony lenses because their SSM lenses are you know even more expensive than the Canon L lenses so you're not going to save a lot of money doing that. So here I've got the Canon 50mm f1.2 FD lens. So this is a fully manual focus lens. So obviously the adapter is only going to give me that same functionality. But the beauty of FD lenses is that they're very cheap on eBay. Uh, very good optically. They're very simple formula. So they give you good quality, good rendering. Uh, and being designed for manual focus, then you know the focus ring and things like that is really good. Whereas I've always found on the autofocus lenses, they, they, they because they're not designed for manual focus. They're not the best in terms of being used for manual focus. So Canon FD lenses are a good cho choice there. So you can also use Pentax lenses. Now Pentax lenses aren't very popular. Uh, you know, there's not a big range of DSLRs that use them. So you get quite a good option in terms of what you can do and things like that. Uh, here I have uh, a Pentax 135 millimeter uh, f2.5, which you know, if you compare that with all the other sort of lenses uh, of 135 millimeters that it's quite sort of small and lightweight uh, here's the adapter for it uh, obviously all manual focus again like the FD lenses so you know you've got quite a big choice of things that you can use there uh, in terms of uh, giving you that the lenses that are quite cost effective so I think this was maybe 50 pounds on eBay uh, a good way to get cheap lenses another great adapter is uh, you can get a tilt adapter so any lens that you have uh, this is a Nikon one so if you've got a Nikon lens you you mount it on and then you can tilt it so you, effectively you've got unlimited tilt lenses then uh, this is actually an old shift lens so it, it becomes like a tilt and shift lens uh, you know but without paying the the big money that you pay for uh, uh, own brand Nikon or own brand Canon tilt shift lens uh, but it lets you play around with tilt shift uh, without the cost. So let's talk a little bit about the different Sony A7 cameras. So uh, the first generation, the A7S, the A7 and the A7R, uh, they all had a similar sort of body, uh, looked a bit like this. Uh, you've got the, the shutter button here uh, and there's a, there's a distinct line between each one. So the A7S is designed for, mainly for video uh, and ultra low light shooting 
it's got contrast autofocus, uh, quite a light uh, sort of weight body. I quite I found the autofocus quite acceptable for uh, weddings and, and other low light situations. Uh, the the autofocus autofocus tracking isn't amazing, uh, but you know I've never really been a heavy uh, autofocus tracking user, so even on my Nikons and Canons and, and various other bodies, uh, most of the time I'll be shooting in single shot. So, you know, bear in mind, if you're going to be using continuous focus, you might find that you want to try the Sony's out first uh, before committing to, to buying them. Uh, so, so this is the A7S. Uh, we've then got uh, the A7 II here. Uh, you can see the body's a uh, little bit different size. Uh, the button, the shutter, shutter button's in a different place. A uh, bit of a heavier body, uh, feels a bit more dense, uh, but you know both both are pretty well built in my opinion. Then you know they're not going to fall apart on you. Uh, again, you know studios, weddings, that sort of thing. I don't think really put too much of a stress on the camera. Uh, I've not not had one break. I've been using them for a year for weddings. I've not really seen any problem. Now people often say to me, uh, you know. I love this, the idea of silent shutter, but I hear I can get banding and all these sort of artifacts and things like that. Uh, now that's probably true of any electronic shutter camera. So the way you get silent shutter is that basically the, the sensor is just read out directly from the camera with no shutter curtain going in front or anything like that. So uh, one of the disadvantages of that is that because it's not reading out the whole sensor at exactly the same time, then you could get uh, little artifacts in there. Uh, now, obviously, you could get artifacts using silent shutter at really fast shutter speeds equally as well as it's read out. And th if something's moving fastly across the frame, you, you can get that. Uh, but people tend to be less worried about that because in those sort of situations, you tend to be able to use a normal shutter. So that, that's not really a problem. So typically, people use silent shutter, for example, in a church where you don't want to be obtrusive. Uh, you know, so I've had that before where a, a vicar said to me, oh, you know, you can't take any photos because, you know, cameras make too much noise. They're distracting. Uh, I've I've turned the camera to silent shooting mode uh, and I've said, look, you know, it makes no sound and, and I've managed to convince them to let me take some photographs so I've been able to deliver my clients uh, some images they wouldn't ordinarily get there. Uh, now, Sony A7 series isn't unique in, in that it offers uh, silent shutter mode, but you need to be aware that any cameras that offer this silent shutter mode, there is a risk that you can get these artifacts as the sensors read out at different times, which basically means that because the lights are cycling, then you can get different brightness levels, which kind of looks like bands across the picture. Uh, now you can play around the shutter speed a little bit to, to help uh, mitigate that. Uh, and the advantage is if you've got review switched on, uh, then you will see it at the time. So you can kind of go, oh, I can see the banding and I'm gonna try tweaking my uh, shutter speed to maybe you know, one fiftieth of a second if we're in the UK, uh, one sixtieth if we're in the US. So it, it kind of depends on what the uh, the frequency and refresh rate is of the lights. Uh, you know, so if you can try and get a full cycle in, you know, sort of thirtieth of a second, for example, then you know you might have a better chance of not getting any banding at all. Uh, but overall, I'd prefer to have this feature uh, than not have this feature. Uh, in my use of it, from you know, the start of last year to now. Uh, I've maybe seen it in a handful of shots, uh, not really very many shots when I have used silent shutter mode. Uh, you know, as soon as you get mainly daylight, uh, even if it's a low level of daylight, then you know the the banding's pretty much non-existent. It's mainly you're going to see this uh, when it's wholly artificially lit, uh, you know, and maybe older lighting that, that that's pulsing quite a lot. Uh, that's when you need to be aware that you might see this feature. Uh, so you know, if you bear that in mind, then that sometimes. Uh, when you might see silent shooting to be a, a problem. So I hope that helps in terms of gives you an idea of what each A7 uh, camera offers, uh, you know, what might be the best choice for you. Uh, as, a, as a summary, I'd say if you're going to be shooting in, in a, the lowest light possible a lot, uh, say maybe you're shooting uh, weddings in the Arctic Circle a lot and, you know, you're shooting at the time of year where there's never any light, then you might want the A7S, the A7S Mark II. Uh, if you're shooting, uh, you know, in in reasonable light with a little bit of low light shooting, uh, then the A7 Mark II is a really good choice because it gives you that sort of balance between uh, lower resolution, higher resolution, uh, good image quality, uh, reasonable file sizes, 
you know, you've got the image stabilizing in the camera. Uh, the cost is great. Uh, you know, you get the good autofocus with adapters. Uh, you know, so it's it's a it's a strong camera to choose, uh, especially for the for the price. And if you're looking to get into the system, it's a good good camera to have in your bag. Uh, you know that, and then you've got the A7 R Mark II, uh, which obviously has the highest resolution. Uh, you know, obviously that's a good thing and a bad thing sometimes. You know, your files are going to be bigger, uh, but you're going to get more detail. You're going to have the advantage of being able to downsize them and get uh, lower noise in your images and higher clarity in them as well. Uh, you've got quite a lot of video options in there. Uh, so you know, if I'm looking to sort of give you a a sort of summary, I'd say the A7R Mark II is probably the best overall camera if you're going to be shooting photography with a little bit of video maybe. Uh, the A7 Mark II if you're going to be, uh, you know, travelling around a lot and, you know, you're on a bit more of a budget uh, and you want to see how the Sony system works for you without sort of investing, you know, four or five thousand pounds to, to see this, how it's going to work for you. Uh, and then you've got the A7S, which is, you know, if you're going to be shooting a lot of low light movies, uh, you know, a lot of low light stills and, you know, you really need that low light ability, then, you know, and that's where the A7S and the A7S Mark II comes into its own, really. Uh, so hope that helps. Uh, if you've got any questions, then leave them below uh, and I will answer them if I can. OK, many thanks and see you next time.